before we go any further, we want to say it's the first night of Hanukkah, so happy Hanukkah <laughs> to all who celebrate. Good for you, yeah. Happy Hanukkah. I, I celebrate Christmas, but in honor of Hanukkah, today I compromised. I listened to Christmas music by Neil Diamond. <laughs> I love Hanukkah, I do. It's the, the festival of lights, you know, we honor the festival of lights, the lights, the festival lights. <laughs> You know, we all, that's what, that's, I don't know a massive, um, Ian, help me out. I don't know a huge amount about it. You're, you're, you're pretty close. The, yeah? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, 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 ancient Israel was, was occupied by uh, a Greek Syrian empire led by King Antiochus, who uh, didn't let us practice our religion and wanted us to uh, worship the Greek gods. So they desecrated our temple and then like a bunch of Jews went up to the hills and then led by this guy Judah Maccabee, just popped out and started wasting a bunch of them until they left. And then we went down to the temple and we were like, oh man, there's only oil for one day. And then it lasted for eight days. So it's a little bit about lights and then a lot about like us just doing Call of Duty <laughs> in the... I'll be honest, that response was longer than I thought. We might have to cancel Megan the Stallion. Um... <laughs> Let's take a look at some headlines. Well, we've got some exciting news to report. At long last, all 50 states have now certified their election results. Or as Trump calls it, no, they didn't. <laughs> West Virginia became the final state to certify their election. They made it official last night. West Virginia is basically like that friend who RSVPs the day before your wedding, just to make it about them, you know? <laughs> But this is big news. Every state now is certified. And amazingly, Steve Kornacki refused to stop reporting results until it was all official today. We've actually got a photo of him here at the end of his working day. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Joe Biden is already making plans to move into the White House next month. And today it was announced that Biden plans to, quote, thoroughly clean and disinfect all furniture, doorknobs, handrails and light switches before he and his team move in. To be fair, he would have done that, coronavirus or not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really see this as a big story. I've never heard of anybody go, oh, we just got the keys to our new place. Oh, congrats, you closed. Yeah, got the keys. We're not going to clean it. We're just going to go in. <laughs> what do you like on the cleanliness front, Reg? How are you on cleanliness? Well, my, I grew up when my mother is a house cleaner right. for, for the Air Force Base, so she had to do white glove inspections. So my yeah. house gets cleaned twice a week. Oh, good for you. I bought, I bought my parents. We never like, had a cleaner or anything. And I bought my parents a, a, a cleaner to go in three days a week. I thought, just take the load off my mum. You know, I've got them a cleaner. And my mum uh, cleaned up before the cleaner came. <laughs> because she didn't want the cleaner to, to yes. think that she was, like, mucky yes. and dirty. And I was like... I do that, too. I was like, I was like well, then, Mum, that is really just a waste of money. She, I don't want to come in the house to dishes and, you know... I don't, <laughs> I know. Well, what, what is she doing, then? Just coming in and sort of wandering around the house. She goes, I really like Sue. We just had a coffee the other day and she just headed out. Like... <laughs> But it's true, they're disinfecting everyone. You know, I wonder what happens to Donald and Melania's old bed. Sorry, let me do that again. I wonder what happens to Donald and Melania's two beds. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big job, though. It's a big job, though. Here's how far Biden is taking it. His new Secretary of Interior will be one of the scrubbing bubbles. <laughs> i got to level with you here, America. That is a reference I know nothing about. <laughs> Nice. I, I have no idea. I went along with it through the mono. Someone went the graphics to come. They showed me the graphic. I'm seeing that for the first time. What are the scrubbing bubbles? It, it's another Hanukkah thing. <laughs> Good name for a band, though. Oh, scrubbing bubbles? Scrubbing bubbles. Yeah. Scrubbing, yeah. Scrubbing bubbles. Yeah, scrubbing but without bubbles. a G. She's Definitely an apostrophe. That. Scrubbing yes. bubbles. Oh, yeah. Puffy had a band called Fuzz Bubble once. Who did? Puffy. Puff Daddy was doing a rock thing, which I auditioned for at one point, and it was called Fuzz Bubble. Fuzz Bubble? Yeah. Yeah. What is it like as an audition for a drummer? Because I get it, you go, if you're a singer, you go and you sing a song, but it's, like, if you're a guitar, you go, oh, I got this. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> like, I get it, like, okay, hi, I play bass, what you got? <laughs> you know, like keyboards, you know. <laughs> Drums, you just like, 
<laughs> and they go, that's not very good. Well, you can't hear the rest of the song. <laughs> I think it's best to just try to be as supportive uh, as possible to everyone else and to try to uh, highlight your versatility as yeah. much as possible, as quickly as possible. Well, I think I speak for everyone here to say we'd love it if you do that here one day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try, I'll try. <laughs> I, will, uh, I will continue to try, yes. <laughs> uh, now, does everybody remember the woman who went viral because of her testimony at the hearing in Michigan last week? If you don't, here's a quick reminder. Yeah. I know what I saw, and I signed something saying that if I'm wrong, I can go to prison. Okay. Did you? Well, that lady is Melissa Carone, and we've got an update for you. Apparently, if the Supreme okay. Court decides to hear President Trump's last-ditch election fraud case, Trump has said that he wants her to appear as a witness again. You know, Psst. because it went so well last time. <laughs> now, here's the thing. There are no witnesses in Supreme Court hearings, but I feel like a British late-night host shouldn't have to explain that to the President of the United <laughs> States. But since her viral appearance, it's come out that Melissa Carone has had trouble with the law in the past and was once a performer at the Badabing Strip Club. But let's not drag the wow. Badabing Strip Club through the mud by associating it with Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> <Let's>... <laughs> I like the idea that if she does testify, I like, the, I like to think she'll get called to the stand, like, OK, coming to the stand, please welcome the always in Chenny, it's Melissa! <laughs> Bad and bougie. bougie. Um, <laughs> moving on, I don't know if you saw this, uh, a list was just released of 2020's most mispronounced words. Apparently, the words most commonly mispronounced this year were Fauci, Carmela, and Da Vinci. And specifically, the way that I say khakis. <laughs> now, when I, actually, I understand you don't know what I mean. You think I just saw khakis, as in starting a car. I don't. We call khakis what... That's what, to me, that's what Steve Kornacki wears on his bottom half. You call them khakis. That's right, right? What, yeah, that's, that's what we call them. What, what if, like, you, your wife doesn't know where her car keys are and she left them in her khakis? What... Like, <laughs> well, I think I had enough <laughs> foresight to not map, to not, you know, marry a life partner who would wear car keys. So, <laughs> <laughs> but Fauci, Carmela, and Da Vinci. I don't want to point fingers at anyone who may have contributed to those mispronunciations this year, but I do think da Vinci? played a part in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a. It's a list of words. This, this list is a list of words that Americans most commonly mispronounce. But as a Brit who speaks the Queen's English, I must say 90% of words that you speak in America are mispronounced. OK? Yes. <laughs> like, let's do a little quiz, OK? Ian, Reg, I will show you something and you say what it is, OK? So take a look at this. This is exciting. Do you know, like, so what's that? Yogurt. Correct. Y yogurt. Incorrect. Ah. <laughs> OK, you're right, Reg. It's a yoghurt. It's not a yoghurt. It's a yoghurt. Uh, all right. <laughs> Either way, I'm, I'm not eating it, so... <laughs> all right, what about this one? Zebra. You're right. What is it, Ian? Yeah, it's, it's a zebra. It's We're not. A... It's a zebra. Uh. It's a zebra. Well, we call it jazz horse. <laughs> <laughs> That was also one of Puffy's bands, wasn't it? Jazz Horse was another... Yeah. And finally, uh, only one late-night show, frankly, had the courage to bring you this next story. Kung Fu experts in a central <laughs> Chinese village are trying to save a tradition that they are concerned is quickly fading away. It's known as Iron Crotch Kung Fu. Take a look, you might figure out why. I mean, that is nuts. <laughs> if I had to guess, I think the art form might be dying out because none of these guys can procreate. <laughs> How do you even discover that you're good at this? I think, I, I think, I think someone did it accidentally. They're walking through and say, ah, 
oh, and they want to start out like, no, it's Kung Fu, Crotch King. Look, well, it's great. <laughs> but the masters of this tradition, they're getting pretty depressed, I have to say, about the lack of interest in this sport. The guys are walking around like a bunch of sad sacks. <laughs> <laughs> But to help raise awareness, they're actually making a movie about that guy. It's called uh, Crotching Tiger, Balls of Dragons. 